Hi everyone, this is Jason here from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, I'm going to introduce you to an exercise which I composed or a tune I've composed. I tend to call it a tune more than an exercise, but it works on a lot of aspects of your piano technique. It'll work on your hand independence, your chord changing. It'll work on your um, different styles of melody movement, whether you're trying to, you know, pivot one note while playing this has that uh, if you're trying to do some pattern based playing this has it if you're trying to divide the beat into different elements if you're trying to divide by two by three or by four this seems to have all the options quavers semi quavers triplets and so on and so forth now um, apart from that there's also a very good uh, you know practice exercise it's, it's also a good way to kind of prepare for something you're going to do like maybe playing a show uh, you know or getting ready for a rehearsal or a recording this could be a very good 10 minute workout you know so if, uh, you can think of it as a 10 minute piano workout to test almost all aspects of the the right hand and the left hand now the right hand for the most part is going to take take on melodies tackle your uh, melodic playing and improvisation there while your left hand is going to hold chords and rhythm. So I think this exercise not only gives you that platform to express yourself with other stuff, of course, but it also gives you a mindset. It gives you a way to kind of be in the zone, as I call it, to, to create, innovate, compose, you know, jam and of course perform. Right. So I'm going to demonstrate this on both the F major scale and the G major scale. And uh, the notation for this, for those of you who read music, is available on our Patreon in sheet music form. Uh, also, my handwritten notes are available for those of you who don't read. And you'll get both of it, of course, as a Patreon subscriber. Head over there if possible. It will also support our channel really well. So do consider supporting us on patreon and before we get started it'll be great if you could hit that bell icon hit the subscribe button and uh, leave us a like for the video and obviously share uh, give us a comment with stuff you'd like to learn in the future the channel does regular content and um, also share the video with your fellow musician friends or anyone in your house who likes to play the piano introduce them to our channel that'll go a long way before i start teaching the lesson it'll be nice if you could get your keyboards ready and uh, also make note if you're not a piano player if your main instrument is flute violin or something it also works on those instruments. Strangely enough, I composed this exercise on a trumpet, which is another instrument I play. And I also tried it out on the bass, which I'm not so good at. I need to practice it more on the bass. But I have a feeling it's not just a piano exercise because I, in, I invented it not on the piano. Uh, and then it came to the piano and it became an awesome drill. So whichever instrument you play, if you'd like to try this out on the flute, on the mandolin, whatever it may be, pull your instrument out and let's work together come on so on the f major scale first of all let's revise the scale one flat namely who b flat we call it b flat and then uh, g major which is the other scale we'll be doing in in and out of the lesson so that's your g major with one sharp namely who f sharp so I'm going to do it on F and explain the melody first and um, then we'll do it on G sort of fast forward at the end of the at the latter stages of the video. So by the end of at least my discussion or my module we'll be done with two scales and I would encourage you and I would also be you know forcing myself as well when I practice to do it on as many scales and keys as possible. So if you wanted to do it on F major which we are going to do now also try to do it on maybe an F minor so on a major it would be but on a minor it's not too far away you just flatten the third the sixth and maybe even the seventh in the natural or you leave the seventh alone for the harmonic minor so you go sounds minor sounds major so i would encourage you to practice it on different scales and on different keys of these different scales right because then it'll be refreshing your skills it'll 
continue to improve your technique otherwise you'll just be doing it for the sake of doing it because you think the melody is cool or something like that so coming back to the tune so i'm going to play it for you very slowly we are on the key of f f major again so the first line will be repeated almost carbon copied so let's deal with that system first that's my line 1 so you think of it as four sets of four semiquavers four fours are 16 so 16 semiquavers adds up to a bar of 4 so something like this that's your line 1 try it with me let's slow it down f c f a g c g b flat a c a c a lower c then a higher c b flat a g a b flat a g a one more time and you want to count semiquavers which are 16 notes so that will be 1e e and a 2e e and a 3e e and a 4e you can go slightly slower in the initial stages da 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 Okay the second line is very similar to the first line but I at the very end I do B flat A G F in the first line I did B flat A G A I went to the A the first line and second line put together now Ta ra Ta ra 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 Okay in terms of scale degrees it's also nice to mention and make a note of you'll find that in our uh, notes which you can download in the link and you you go 1 5 1 3 it's good to know it in scale numbers so then you can do it wherever 1 5 1 3 if you're familiar with swaras or uh, solfege you could do something like sa pa sa ga re pa re ma re pa re ma or 2 5 2 4 you could kind of scientifically write it down in the paper what are these numbers of whatever notes and then you can transpose it to pretty much whichever key or scale you're trying to work on so 1 5 1 3 2 5 2 4 3 5 2 4 back to the lower 5 3 higher 5 okay so that's common for the first two lines that do do re do do re do re and now ta ra 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 versus ta ra re do second line ta ra 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 ta ra re do one more time and over time try to put put in some speed if you can Yeah, you can. Try. You don't have to go that fast, but you can try. Just try and push yourself out of your comfort zone. An exercise is not an exercise if it doesn't, you know, if it doesn't torture you. In simple words, it has to push you to get better. It has to feel like a workout. It has to be tough. You're not gonna get better if you just play it. You know, you have to play it. out of your comfort zone and in some cases you can go way out of your comfort zone because then when you have to deal with actual material like improvising with musicians jamming and stuff like that things get a lot easier okay so in the left hand what do we do in the left hand i'm taking these chords with these inversions i'm playing f major with second inversion so you go c f a now i could have played F A C, but then the C is clashing here. So instead of that, I go here. Okay. For the first beat, I play ta da da re. Now for the second beat, I I hope you're hearing that right. Chords are in in this exercise. The chords are going to change every beat, not every bar, which is conventional. So ta da 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 re da da ro. What happened there? Ta da 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 re da da. I went to a C major there which is the 5 ta ta da re da da ro come back to the tonic which is F ta ta da re da da re 
Now I'm playing the subdominant or the predominant chord which is B flat major played as D F B flat so one more time now you could do the five or the four for that middle chord or both sound good but i'm going with 1 5 which is c major 1 4 1 5 1 4 1 5 1 4 1 5 1 So you can do is put in some punch. I like that staccato for the first three. Kind of opens up like you're opening and closing something. So uh, yeah, you could also work on your rhythm. For example. You saw that. So the second chord, one E and a two E. Second chord is coming in at the E, where I did the strange uh, uh, movement, which I can't really control. That's just a natural thing. So you go. Try to always sing along as you play. Mumble something which works for you. I I guess right. So that's your first two lines, which are pretty much a carbon copy of each other. Moving forward, we go to this melody. Let me play it for you and then break the thing down, guys. So you go. Okay, so that goes. Now for F major we tend to always need to cross over our ring finger because of that B flat there it'll be tricky otherwise so it goes Don't want the middle there it's recommended to do the ring so so I'm doing middle on D thumb again on F cross the ring Now what did I do there? So let's break that down. Do that. One E and a two E. That's eight notes. So da 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 da. D F D F E D C B flat. Get that first. So so get that cross going. Don't move your elbow too much. I know it's. It's difficult to avoid moving the elbow, but don't move it too much. You don't want to move it so that you lose balance on while playing the line. So, moving forward. So what did I do? The A G A B flat C A F C lower C. You see the amount I've covered now. I've covered more, almost an octave and a half, I guess. Let me play you the line again. Okay, and then you need to jump again to play the next line, which is again almost a carbon copy, except the end. I kind of chill out by playing quavers, not semi quavers. Quavers are eighth notes. Semi quavers are sixteenth notes. For those of you who are a bit confused, so and then. So instead of doing ta da da da, I did ta da the second time. Very slowly. And also while we are at it, let's think of some chords. What did I do there? I did B flat major, which is the predominant. C major, which is the dominant. You want, may want to stick in this region. The same inversions as we learned for the first melody, right? So same story.
so you do b flat major c major so b flat major c major and f repeat the f major da 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 de 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 so get that get those two lines let's do it together okay now the third line and fourth line well third line is ditto of the first line you kind of set that up by third line of the second section and lastly what did i do there those are 16th note triplets in action so 16th note triplet would divide a beat into six units that's what i'm trying to incorporate at the end so you go third time last so let's just go through the fingering of that triplet lick at the end now you have to cross it back because i would want you to recycle the melody so the one i taught you at the beginning so try to end on your ring finger okay so the the idea behind the exercise is you do the first two lines which is a different melody now in the next section repeat 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 the end with the triplet flourish back So when you do this exercise we need to keep a few things in mind one is don't forget your chords If you are struggling with the chords and the chord changes you can at least hold down like a single F but don't forget to keep the pulse I find some of my students sometimes is obsessed with the right hand melody that they forget about the left hand altogether and that's not a good thing you want both your hands to always play this instrument together if you play with one hand it's not the right thing people like me will find you okay so in this case if you're not able to play the chords you just do single notes roots of the scale on the pulse because it doesn't sound harmonically cool so then you could play the roots of the chords you could play the roots of the chords um, you could also well just play the one chord f major and then graduate towards the chords then b flat c f b flat c f b flat c f b flat c f triplet 
Okay, guys. So, so what I want you to do is go through our notes. The notes will definitely help you out with the scale. It'll also help you out with the fingering. However, uh, by the before I go to G major and a few other variations, I'm gonna just slow this whole thing down without me talking, so that you can watch everything which is going on. And a few tips about fingering is plan ahead of time. You always want to think what is the next thing I'm going to play. Don't think about what is convenient at the current point. If you think of that, then you'll ignore your ring and your pinky, because the ring and the pinky are the weaker fingers, right? The ring is sort of tied up to the other fingers; it doesn't have a mind of its own, and the pinky we feel is generally weak. It's not really weak; it's it's a really, really powerful finger. You should check it out. So <clears throat> now, when you play, you need to use the correct fingering, and also where you start is important. So. you want to think about that you know so you this is the ideal starting point this is what i prefer so index index ring on the b flat middle on the a this is what will really help you so i'm playing it quite effortlessly you don't want to overthink it with your pinky and or rather overplay it with your pinky It'll be impossible. So index, ring, middle, and then your setup with the pinky playing the C. Okay, let me play the whole thing slowly. Watch my right hand and left hand, and the fingering is also very important. Then let's move on. Right guys I hope this exercise is going to really help you really develop those muscles develop the minds of each finger to try and do its own thing let me just demonstrate it very quickly on G major G major is all already uh, notated for you you can check it out and uh, encourage you to obviously do it on other scales as well so G will be almost the same fingering at least for the first half then taran tarararadu it's quite convenient i think and then tarararadu taran tan tarararadu tan 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 tarararadu tan tan slowly let's do it slowly the chords will change obviously in the left you'll be doing g major d major g c g okay then moving forward let's do it slowly Unlike F, you cross down your middle finger there. Again. Again. You can also flip out some fingers. See, by miss, by chance, if you play the pinky here, it's very difficult to go back to the G with the pinky. So, check that out. Let's say by mistake or by chance you've played the pinky here. You can flip that out with the middle or the ring or whatever else. So slow the process down. My general recommendation is to play 
द रिंग फिंगर ऑन अ ब्लैक नोट क्रॉस द मिडल या सो इन दिस केस आई कैन ओनली क्रॉस माई पिंकी राइट आई कैन क्रॉस माई मिडल फिंगर सो सो यूज द पिंकी फ्लिप आउट विद द मिडल सो होल थिंग अगेन so i've demonstrated it on g yes fingering is something you need to also play around with sometimes you can flip out fingers but don't commit to three fingers and then expect to get great results you need to commit to all your five and use all of them figure out how to use all of them uh, while you play the piano chords are written down you have g major c major d major the tonic subdominant and dominant now before i leave you with this lesson i would highly encourage you to practice this on the minor keys on the parallel minors they sound absolutely beautiful if i played on f f minor and then it sounds really cool on minor so practice that so you shouldn't take the harmonic minor for granted because there's a gap between the 6th and the 7th so that might confuse your fingers a bit uh, compared to what you did with the major so definitely try to practice this exercise on the minor harmonic natural whichever you prefer and uh, yeah that's the exercise guys so in a nutshell it's a good exercise to help you with uh, the pivoting of notes it's a good exercise to help you with chord changes which happen at a fairly rapid rate i understand it's not for the absolute beginner yes you should have played for a while at least a few months and uh, with some hand coordination you know you will be able to play this exercise thanks again for watching guys this is jason here from nathaniel don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already hit that bell icon for notifications consider getting yourself a copy of these lesson notes and not only this lesson pretty much all the other lessons for just 5 dollars a month i will see you in the next one or you will see me in the next one cheers